Over the past year, I have garnered an immense amount of respect for Tatsuki Fujimoto. He is an author who has created some of the most enthralling, immersive, and stunningly beautiful stories I have ever encountered, and he is also an author that I have nothing but love for. He go, that's kinda gay. Now recently he published a 142 page one shot titled Look Back, and in my opinion, it is easily one of the best if not the best self contained short story within the manga medium. The story of Look Back is a simple one, it's about two friends aspiring to become mangakas and the joys and difficulties they go through as they pursue such a dream. Now I could elaborate on that premise a lot more, but I think for this work in specific, the best way for you to get the most out of your experience is to go into it completely blind. Because Look Back is a story that should be experienced firsthand with no prior knowledge or expectation. See for yourself what makes this one shot so special, and I guarantee that it'll be a worthwhile. For me personally, it's a real atmosphere, vivid portrayal of emotion, and ability to invoke that same emotion into the reader is what kept me continuously engaged. With every page turn, my immersion only grew, and by the end of it, the story climaxed into a beautiful, heartfelt finish. So yeah, if that short description intrigues you at all, then check it out. But that being said, if you're looking for something a little bit more in depth, then here it is. This is something Fujimoto is incredibly skilled at, but in every work I've read of his, he's able to get you to care in very minimal yet effective methods, and in Look Back, he refines that skill to an even greater degree. This is a story about two passionate artists as they go through various stages in their lives. They have moments where they feel inspired and moments where they feel defeated, and Fujimoto perfectly captures that through his excellent usage of imagery and paneling. He brings these characters and their struggles to life, and it's something that can be entirely felt as you progress through the story. The world feels alive and its characters feel human. You're shown not only the good within people, but also the bad. Fujino and Kiyomoto are our main characters, and they each have their own strengths as well as their own flaws. While Fujino is able to craft interesting narratives, Kiyomoto is far more adept at drawing. And so, even though they both have their own unique skill sets, they also both lack what the other has. And that fact leads to personal insecurities. Specifically in Fujino's case, initially she's motivated to get better as an artist after seeing Kiyomoto's art for the first time. But it's as months and years pass, as she dedicates her entire being to her passion, and by the end of it, as all that time spent amounts to nothing, Fujino gives up. The very thing that kept her going, her desire to draw, is thrown away because when compared to Kiyomoto, Fujino felt inadequate. To her, she wasn't good enough. And these feelings of inferiority, disappointment, and self-contempt are all the more realized because of how well Fujimoto is able to execute upon them. He puts a great deal of care and effort into conveying the emotions his characters feel, and that creates for impact. For example, oftentimes you'll see the same panel or imagery being repeated again and again, but twisted ever so slightly in purpose of reinforcing certain ideas and themes, which makes the emotional highs hit that much harder. Fujino is passionate about art, but Fujimoto doesn't just tell us this and instead shows it to us in intricate detail. He shows Fujino shutting herself out from the world, he shows her hanging out with her friends less and less, and through that, he shows her becoming increasingly isolated. But strangely enough, while time continues to move forward, the image of her drawing remains the same. There's this sense of progression, yet not at the same time. Fujino is obviously improving little by little, but that improvement takes real dedication and commitment. While the world may be changing, change for her is much harder to come by. And that's all conveyed through visual means. This is what it means to draw, to live as an artist. There are times of longing and times of hope, but in both cases, it requires you to stick through, to make sacrifices. And so when Fujino says the words, I give up, or when she dances in the rain after being acknowledged for the first time, I feel it because it means something. It means that sacrifice either paid off or it didn't. There's also these really wholesome scenes between Fujino and Kiyomoto that perfectly sell you on their relationship. They go from strangers to friends who deeply care and respect the other, and seeing that develop is heartwarming. In fact, over the course of the entire narrative, you'll probably end up falling for them both. 
Now, on Kiyomoto's end, she's just a really sweet, kind, and genuinely passionate person. And that passion, that desire to grow as both an individual and an artist, bleeds onto every facet of this narrative. In fact, it's precisely because of Kiyomoto's desire to draw that Fujino was inspired to pick up the pen once again. On another note, since I'm sure all of you have noticed by now, the two main characters Fujino and Kiyomoto are very likely self-inserts of Fujimoto himself. And so these inner turmoils of feeling incompetent, wanting to give up, and being isolated could very well be inspired from Fujimoto's own experiences. Which adds an extra layer of richness to this one shot and puts into perspective some of the personal struggles Fujimoto may have gone through. Of course, I can't say the extent to how much look back accurately depicts Fujimoto's psyche, and I'd rather rather not analyze it since it's better up left for interpretation, but nonetheless it's still worth noting and being aware of. Also, some of the themes that are tackled, especially in the latter portion, are very heavy and deserving of at least, you know, 10, 10 IQ worth of attention. So with all that being said, check Look Back Out. It's definitely one of my top recommendations, and the more eyes on it, the better. 